Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is Force and today I will be providing you with an overview to Magic the Gathering Duels of the Planeswalkers 2015. Here in this video I'm going to talk about the good and the bad. There's a lot of bad, but there is some good too. The goal of this video is just to give you an idea of what to expect and help you decide if this year's installment of Duels of the Planeswalkers is worth a purchase for you individually. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start off on a positive note. Number one, because I like to do that, but also because the list of negatives is much larger. First and foremost, the in-game UI I think is fantastic. And I'm not talking about the menus, I'm talking about actually playing a game, you and an opponent, and the representation Representation, the board, I think is a vast improvement over Duels 2014. The way they represent your player character, the health, the cards in hands, the cards in deck, I just think it looks slick. It's it's much improved over the last year's installment. It might be one of my favorite Duels uh, in-game interfaces so far, period. It's uh, Again, it's very easy to read on the fly, and I think that's a great thing. The way that they represent the phases, all of that looks fantastic. Kind of on the fence about how they represent the attack phase by splitting the board in half and moving all the cards. Uh, I think they could have handled that a little bit differently, but it, you know, it's okay, I suppose. Another thing that I am just absolutely in love with, and the thing that I was most anticipating and hasn't let me down, is the deck customization. It is amazing. So we've got a, a play set here in Duels 2015 of roughly 300 cards. I don't know the exact number, but it's somewhere around there. And when you, once you have unlocked all of those cards, which we'll get into how you do that later on, but once you've unlocked all 300 cards, you can make whatever deck you want. So you can make a mono color deck, you can make a white weenie deck, you can make a dual color deck, a tri color deck, you can make a five color deck if you want. And there are cards to support that with the with the uh, inclusion of multiple type of lands with the gates that will tap for two different colors and artifacts that will tap for various colors. Th there's the opportunity for a five color deck here in Duels 2015. So what this is going to mean is we're going to have an incredibly varied metagame when it it comes to multiplayer. Yeah, the deck customization is amazing. I love it. I'm, I'm super excited to just take this pool of cards, okay, and make whatever deck I want and just see how it does competitively. It, it's much more so, uh, there, there's just so much more customization than what you even get in a game like Hearthstone, because Hearthstone is restricted to class-specific cards. Here, you don't have that restriction anymore. This is definitely a step in the right direction. Now, there are some restrictions in that you can only have four of any common, three of any uncommon, two of any rare, and one of any mythic rare. But that's better than what I expected it to be. I actually thought it was gonna be restricted to four common, two uncommon, and then one rare. It's not the best, you know? We would like it to be like Paper Magic and that you're just restricted to four of any card, but that's not the case here. Still though, I do think that this particular aspect is a step in the right direction. Now, let's go on to the bad. This is a long list. Number one, we'll start here just from the beginning, the menus. The menu system, while it looks kind of neat, it's just horrible to navigate on the PC and it's quite clearly designed for the mobile platform, the tablets out there. It's just quite obvious, you you filter through these things and you've got to go through then several layers if you want to go and there's, this, there's just a long, a relatively long transition every time you do it and it's just really, I don't know, it's, I mean, well I do know, again, it's quite obviously designed for tablets and that's very frustrating to deal with as a PC player. And so I go through all these menus and then to go back again, we've got another relatively long transition screen and then we've got to go all the way back through each of the several layers till we get back to the beginning. I mean, it's just obnoxious. It's clearly not meant for the PC and that is very annoying. Now, that's my perspective. If it is the case that Wizards has a much larger player base on the tablets, then it makes sense that they would design a tablet interface. But for some reason, I don't think that is the case. I have to believe that most people are playing Duels 2015 on the PC and I wish there was a more PC friendly interface or at the very least that they had two different versions, right? A PC version and a tablet version instead of a quite obviously tablet designed port which does not work on the PC whatsoever. Uh, the multiplayer, here's the big problem. Multiplayer, great, play against other people, fantastic, you do 1v1 duels, who doesn't love that? The problem though is that it's incredibly limited. This year's installment of duels only has two player mode, three player mode, 
and four player mode. So none of those special, uh, none of the special gameplay modes and not even two headed giants. Well, what about the four player mode? Four player mode does not allow you to set up teams. It is just a four player free for all. That is it. They excluded the fun gameplay modes. They don't even have two headed giant, which it seems quite anecdotally that that was a highly enjoyed type of multiplayer. I myself absolutely loved it. It's the reason I really, really loved playing Magic the Gathering, the Duels of the Planeswalker series over Hearthstone because I could play with my friends. You cannot play with your friends here in Duels 2015. Now I was reading a Reddit AMA in which it appears the reason for this is because they, they didn't like how the interface looked in Two-Headed Giant, how everything was sort of squished and just wasn't working how they wanted it to in the past installments. So they just decided to nix it in this installment. I would have rather than put in a crappy version, or according to them, a crappy version of Two-Headed Giant than none at all. And then finally, we're going to move on to the biggest commotion causing aspect of Duels of the Planeswalkers 2015, and that is the microtransaction. So let me explain to you how this works, all right? The base game costs $10. Not so bad. The problem is that with the base game, you can play through the game and unlock all of the base cards, but there is also a set of premium cards. The base level cards you can unlock completely by playing the game. To get these premium cards, you have to buy them. Now there are 14 booster packs that you can purchase and they are priced at $1.99 each, so that's gonna be a total of $28. What this means is that, that if you want access to all of the cards in Duels 2015 that are currently available on day one, the real cost of this game is $38, all right? So you've got the $10 base cost and then spending the extra $28 for these 14 booster packs. The other thing you can purchase are these card collections. Don't waste your money. These will unlock all of the base cards which you will get just by playing the game. When you play through the campaign, every time you defeat a new character, you unlock an ever-increasing uh, uh, number of cards. I think in the first tier of the campaign, it's like three cards for each booster pack, and then it goes up to something like eight or 10, and then it goes up to like 14. And I think the last tier that I did, uh, the booster pack unlocked was like 18 cards. So basically, when you play through the single player campaign, and when you do multiplayer games and you win, you will unlock a booster pack of the base set, and you will do that often enough um, that you will eventually unlock all of those cards for free. So don't waste your money on this this package, any of these packages, don't waste your money on them because again, you can just by playing the game and it seems fairly quick. I've only played for a few hours and my catalog of cards is rather huge. I've got a ton of cards right now after only a couple of hours of playing. With all of that said, the good, I love the look of the UI. I think it's great. It's much cleaner, slicker than it has been in the past. The deck customization is amazing. And for me, that is the selling point of Duels 2015. That's the thing that makes me say, absolutely, I'm gonna keep playing this because the fact that I've just got, I can run the gambit with all the cards available and make whatever deck that I want, that's amazing. The negatives, well, the menu's terrible. There's long transitions for some unexplained reason. I assume they're hiding loading screens, but it's something that we haven't had to deal with in the past. Uh, the AI is terrible for mana tapping, forcing you to do that extra step when playing the game. The multiplayer, the exclusion of two-headed giant, the fact that there's only 1v1, three-player, and four-player free-for-all, the fact that those are the only game modes is very disappointing because they're, they've stripped two-headed giant and the other fun gameplay modes that they had in the past. And then lastly, the microtransactions that basically make the real cost of this game $38, not $10, but $38 if you want access to all potential cards. So here's the question for you. Are you willing to pay $38 for less multiplayer gameplay modes, a terrible UI, and full deck customization? So there's some negative, there's some positive. Is it enough for you? Is $38 too high of a price? I'd be inclined to say for most people, probably yeah. That's probably too high of a price for this, especially considering that we will likely be getting other expansion packs. I don't know if that's 
certain, but I would assume that they're going to be releasing more cards in the future that we're going to have to purchase. And $38, you know, it's not $60, but this is also a yearly game. This is a yearly game that they stripped features out of, which is incredibly annoying. And even though they're making steps where they need to go, in the sense that the deck customization is unreal, they've also made a bunch of steps backwards. So it's up to you. I'm still gonna play this because I, I, I'm just a fiend for magic and I love the customization, but I'm incredibly disappointed overall in what they have presented in this year's installment. Couple of notes, if you're listening to this Wizards of the Coast. I think you should have those pre-constructed decks. I don't think you should force people into these two colors because if they pick two colors that they hate and they go beyond the tutorial, they're just stuck with those and it's hard to win games if the two colors you picked just aren't meshing well and it's just not fitting your play style. So I, I feel like they should still have those pre-constructed decks that they have had in the past. Let people pick what they want and then still have this card unlocking process through playing the campaign and then just give us access to all the cards to, to, to do what you ha allow us to do here in the deck construction. You know, give us, give us this amazing ability to customize our own decks but also make it better for new people who are coming into this and get rid of like give us back two-headed giant and what the crap tell us the true price of the game don't have an initial price and then a premium price for these extra set of cars because that's just i think that's just kind of shady that's all i'm saying but anyways here it is, Duels 2015, laying it all out on the table. Uh, hopefully this video proved informative and uh, maybe entertaining for you guys. I just wanted to get the information out there, let people know what is going on with this year's installment. And again, let you decide if this is something that you want to buy. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Hope you have a fantastic day. Stay tuned for more other great gaming coverage coming up here on the channel. And we will be picking up uh, the Friday Night Magic series here on... Friday with a multiplayer game. I'm running a white weenie deck right now. It's doing fairly well, so you might get to see that dominate uh, in this week's episode. All right, guys, thanks so much. Hope you have a fantastic day. Keep watching and keep owning.